Hey guys, Mr. B here, and I'm going to teach you a very important life skill today. Let me zoom up on my calculator a little bit. So this is a old school Casio. Uh, I've had this for a number of years. And uh, my first Casio I had like this was slightly better, but I lost it in a tragic hydrochloric acid accident. Um, don't worry, I wasn't hurt, so um, you can rest easy on that. But my calculator was like, the face of it was like melted. All right, so, and that was in university, so I replaced it with this one, and I've had it ever since. It's one of my favorites, and if I, if you have to get one calculator, uh, it would be a Casio FX, some number, ES on the end. You will not regret it. I should get one. I have, I've given away a billion of them, but I should keep one for myself. All right, so, um, I'm going to teach you today how to use this little guy right here, A to the B over C. A lot of calculators have them, not necessarily just Casio's, but a lot of calculators have them. And, uh, you know, one thing I tell my students is, a lot of times, you got a calculator, don't worry about too much about uh, some of the little things, especially fractions. Anytime you have a question with fractions in it, they always freak out. So, I'm going to teach you how to use this fraction button today and try to, you know, not worry too much. So, let's say I had a question, you know, where you might have a quadratic function, say y is equal to 2x squared minus x plus 5. So, and the teacher asks you to evaluate with fractions. So let's say the fraction was, I say, well, what's the value of y as x is equal to negative 1 over 3? So a lot of my students would say, sir, can I change that to a fraction? I would say, absolutely not. Negative 1 over 3 is a, is a repeating decimal, and you cannot approximate it. It has to be used as 1 over 3. So then they start to immediately freak out. So, but it doesn't really matter because my calculator can do all the heavy lifting with these things. And if you're in an advanced course, well, you should know how to do this stuff anyway. But you can't be messing around, finding common denominators and all that kind of jazz on a test. You just don't have the time, right? So you have to sort of rely on your calculator to do some of the math for you. So I can easily put this in here with my fraction button. So I can go negative 1 over 3 squared minus, and I like to use a lot of brackets. I'm a bracket guy. So you can see that that gives me like a little, I don't even know what you call it, it looks like a, one of those little guys in Tetris, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, that represents the, you know, the over sign per se. And then plus 5. And it shoots me back a number. And what that number means is 5 and 5 over 9. Now, not most people don't want it like that, so I'll press Shift. And you can see the section fu second function part says D over C. So that's just going to change it to a improper fraction, which is 50 over 9. And there it is. You don't have to worry too much about dealing with fractions because it gives us back this beauty, beauty answer. Now, if I was doing something, I was just, you know, working out a bunch of stuff. Say, let's say, um, I don't know, I did 15, 18 times 3 divided by 7 um, times 5. Now this is probably not going to work for me, but oh, it did. So let's say I was doing a big old complex answer, and I didn't really think about the fraction part beforehand. All I got to do is press this button, and it's going to shoot back a fraction for me. So you see it shoot it back, initial mixed number, and then this guy in um, improper fraction, right? For him. I had a brain fart there for a second, guys. Um, but yeah, so this button right here is definitely one way to immediately improve your mark on the test. So that is a thing of beauty. All right. Hope this helped you. And uh, if Casio, if anybody from Casio is out there watching this program, I want a job. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks for watching.